Hi, I'm Nicole, the math lady, and I'm here today to give you a walkthrough of the Saxon 5-4 curriculum. Now, I know when you're starting a new curriculum or even when you're just looking at the textbook newly, it can be a challenge to know how do all of these work together? How is the lessons broken up? So we're going to take care of all of that together. So buckle up and get ready to do a walkthrough of Saxon 5-4. Let's get started with the name. It is called Saxon 5-4. And people always ask me, what does the 5-4 mean? Well, you want to focus on the second number. The second number is 4, which means this is on grade level for 4th grade. But also, 5th graders can use it. Maybe 5th graders who might be struggling a little bit, or maybe that's just the pace that they're working at. So it's for 5th graders and 4th graders on grade level for 4th grade. We're going to be using the 2005 third edition. That's the most recent one, and that's also the one I used for my videos. Let's take a look at the books you'll need for the Saxon 5-4 curriculum. First up is the student textbook. All right, it is soft cover, and it's the hefty one. It's a little big. <laughs> but you're also going to need the solutions manual. And the third one is called the test and worksheets book. All right, let's break down each one of them. We're going to start with the student textbook. The student textbook. First thing you need to know is that this is the main book that you're going to need for the Saxon 5-4 curriculum. There is not a teacher's guide or a facilitator's guide. Everybody uses the same books. Now, how is it broken down? There's a 120 lessons and 12 investigations. Investigations are kind of hands-on lessons, kind of like science labs, where students get to be just a bit more hands-on as they're learning that lesson. Now, let's look particularly at a lesson. It's broken down into four parts. There's the warm-up, the new concept, the lesson practice, and the mixed practice. Let's go through each of those. Let's start with the warm-up. The warm-up is just that. It's just going to spend around 10 minutes trying to get your students brain ready for doing math. The first part of it is called the facts practice. Now the facts practice is where they get to work on those math drills, you know, those things that we want to become automatic. Okay, now they have these worksheets. The worksheets are located in that test and worksheets book and the students can write directly on them. They're timed for five minutes and students do some quick drills just to get to that place of automaticity on their math facts. Second part of the warm-up is called mental math. It's just a handful of problems that students should be able to do in their head. But there is a place to write down their answers. Again, it'll be in that test and worksheets booklet. The third part is called the problem-solving question. And it's generally one question where it's less computation-based and it's more logic-based. The students are going to have to figure out a strategy to solve that problem. All in all, the warm-up should take just about 10 minutes just to get our students started. The next section is called the new concept. This is where all the material for the day is taught, the new math material. Now there's three ways that you can handle this. You could decide to teach your student yourself. Everything you need is in that student textbook. Or you could give the book to your student and have them teach themselves. Or, and a lot of people do this, they use me, Nicole the Math Lady. I teach each and every lesson in the student textbook. And I teach it how it is in the textbook. So they are pre-recorded, so you can watch it at any time that you want to do your math. Generally, lessons are 5 to 10 minutes in length. The third part is called the lesson practice. This is where they have a few practice problems on what they just learned in the new concept. And it's just a chance to give them some real practice to make sure they got the new concept. Now, there's not space in the book for them to actually work out these problems. So I tell my students just to keep a spiral notebook next to them and record their answers there so they have them at all times. Now, you also could do something a little extra. On the Nicole the Math Lady platform, I have an optional practice problems video. Here's what I found. Some students need a little bit more hand-holding before doing the problems completely on their own. So I'll ask them to do a certain problem, and then they come back, and I do a step-by-step -step walkthrough of that problem. That way, if they made a mistake somewhere, they can find exactly where they made that mistake and put in that correction right away. 
Again, it's optional, so some students do it, some students don't, some students use it for extra practice during the summertime. The last part of the lesson is called the mixed practice. Now, this is what Saxon is known for. It's In this textbook, it's 26 math problems that are of a spiral review. What do I mean by spiral review? Well, it means that some of the problems will be from today's lesson, some will be from yesterday's lesson, some might be from the week before, and some might be from the week before that. You're constantly spiraling back to problems that they've done before. Why? Well, this is math, and you are always going to be building upon building upon building upon that foundation in math. This way, students are regularly seeing concepts, and they do not have a chance to forget it. Now, here's an important thing. For each problem, there is a number that's in parentheses. This number tells you which lesson this problem originally came from. And that way, if the student has a question, they can always go back to that problem for reference. Now this is where I want to tell you a little bit about Nicole the Math Lady's online grading. So this is where students can enter their answers for any of the practice problems into our online grading system and we will grade it for them immediately. There's two really great benefits to this. The first one is that they get immediate feedback. We know with math, grading can be a challenge for our parents sometimes to get to it. But math, we really do have to keep up with the grading because that way the kids aren't getting the wrong things pounded into their brains over and over again. So if they do uh, online grading, they get immediate feedback and it tells them whether or not their problems or their answers are correct or incorrect. Now, if they're incorrect, we give them some retries. We have a chance where they can go ahead and correct that problem. And remember that number I told you about that was in parentheses? We actually provide that as a link in the system that will take the student back to the video that I taught that day on that problem. So, online grading is great for students. But it's also great for parents because, as I said, we know sometimes it's hard to keep up with the grading, and that is super important in math. It helps you focus your time because you can now focus where your student needs help rather than grading every single problem. There's just a few other things in the student textbook that I want to cover. Now remember, I said there are those investigations. Those are there. They're generally every 10 lessons you'll find an investigation. You'll also find a really great glossary in the back of the book. And in the front of the book, you'll find a few things like a list of materials, um, a letter from the author. His name is Stephen Hake, wonderful man. I've had a chance to meet him. And then you'll also find uh, a little bit about the Saxon math philosophy. I highly recommend reading those pages before you get started. Let's move on to that second book. It's called the Solutions Manual. This is definitely one of the books you want to have. Why? Well, because in the Solutions Manual, you'll find detailed walkthroughs of each of the practice problems that they'll do. You've got them for the lesson practice. Those are more simple walkthroughs, but then the detailed ones come for the mixed practice. So you definitely want to get your Solutions Manual. The third one, again, is the Test and Worksheets book. So you're going to have tests. Every five or so lessons, there's a test. And there, at the beginning of the test section in the booklet, you will see a schedule on which you should administer the test. Now, if you have the Nicole the Math Lady platform, we actually have those tests in our system, so you don't have to worry about when it comes up in the schedule. So those are the tests, but there's also the worksheets. As I said before, there's the math facts practice. You can put your mental math answers there. Sometimes the investigations have an extra page or two that you need to reference. That all can be found in the test and worksheets book. And that's it. That's everything you need to get started with the Saxon Math 5-4 curriculum. So hopefully you understand all of the books and you have everything you need to get started. And that's it for me, Nicole the Math Lady. I hope this has been helpful for you. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Take care.